believe it or not, I am fighting off another cold, I think. It's not COVID, but I used to be someone who never got sick and now it's like every other month. But welcome back to Indoor Cat. I'm Cat. At the time of filming right now, we are about a month and a half out from when I posted my first video. 37 year old female starts a YouTube. That is most likely how you found me and how you found my channel. When your first video goes out, you're supposed to get like maybe 12 views. Um, I was not expecting the response it got. A lot of the comments were people who wanted to create something of their own or wanted to make the leap to make their own YouTube channel. And there was a lot of questions for me about how I went about doing this, my creative life and experience. So I thought, why not chat about it? Why not um, give you the history? And it might be a little chattier than some of my other videos, but I, I like that. I think that's one of the reasons I, I love YouTube is because it is longer form and you can really sit and settle in with somebody. So yeah, let's get into it. I thought we would start with my creative background. A question that kept popping up was, did I have any filmmaking experience or go to any sort of formal film school, get any training? And the answer is no. I was an English major. And was I an English major because I always had my nose in a stack of books and wanted to write one myself? No, definitely, definitely not. I was an English major because I was too scared to put what I really wanted to be, and that was a theater major. Yeah. I got involved in theater in my junior year of high school, and it was the first thing that got me out of my really shy little shell. And just being able to be on stage and be this other character who wasn't me and have a voice that people listened. It was like nothing I ever experienced before and I felt fully embodied uh, as a human being for the first time. Uh, yeah, no big deal. But when it came time to apply to colleges and think about that next step, I was far too practical and I thought theater wouldn't look good on a resume as far as getting a job in the real world after college. And you know, I liked English class a lot. I was good at it. I knew how to use my, you know, howevers and my therefores and connect long sentences and make them sound really fancy. And I loved my English teacher so much. I just felt like in class we would start, you know, discussing a book, but then it would trail off into some sort of philosophical conversation and deeper thoughts on the meaning of life. Those weren't happening in trigonometry. Um, so I thought, maybe I'll be an English teacher. <laughs> I love my English teachers, I'll be one too. And then I came to realize, no, I actually don't want to be an English teacher. I want to have deep, meaningful, philosophical conversations, and I like wearing cardigans. But you don't need to be a teacher to wear cardigans. You can wear cardigans in a lot of different professions. Hell, I'll put on a cardigan right now. There we go. And it was very clear I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life and I was trying on different identities. You know, sometimes I look back and, and I wonder if I had chosen to be a theater major, where would that have led me? You know, would I have gone on to a graduate program? Would I have moved to New York sooner? It's the life not lived and we just kind of have to let that go. But practical cat, she wasn't all bad because my English degree got me a job right out of college writing product descriptions and I turned that into a career being a copywriter, which is how I've supported myself ever since. You know, maybe it felt like at the time I chose the safe route, but I would say, you know, my life has been full of adventure and excitement and lots of creativity because I made sure that it was. And it took many, many years later, but I did pursue theater again and make it a part of my life. I lived in San Francisco at the time. Uh, I lived there for about 10 years before moving to New York. I started taking acting classes at night and I auditioned for some community theater. It was fun to exercise that muscle again. I got to, you know, be a, a Grecian god. I got to be a surly teenager. I got to be a trouser wearing writer from the 1920s. I would say those years were some of the most creatively fulfilling and joyous of my life. But that's all theater. So where did film and video start coming into this? Well, I remember it very well. 
it was around 2016, maybe 2017, and Instagram stories had just kind of launched. And I remember sitting at a bar. It's this old bar in the North Beach neighborhood of San Francisco. It's called um, Vesuvio. And it's very historic because that's where all the beat poets would hang out. It looks out over Jack Kerouac Alley. I was sitting at a little table with my boyfriend at the time having a martini and it started to rain. And I looked down in the alley and there is just this beautiful like street lamp lighting the alleyway and then people passing by with umbrellas. And I thought, God, that's gorgeous, like very cinematic. I need to film this. So, so I got out my phone and I, you know, filmed the umbrella people walking below. God, I wish I had this footage still. And then I was like, we should make this a little story. So I was like, maybe it's a character and I'm having my drink and maybe someone passes her a napkin and there's a note on it. So we did a top down shot of the napkin sliding across the table and she takes it and she turns it over and it says something. It says, um, I still haven't forgotten about you. Something like that. And then the last shot was me leaving the bar, kind of buttoning up my coat and opening my umbrella and walking down the street. So I put it in black and white, of course, and put it on my Instagram stories in a little sequence. And I started getting responses from friends like, what, what, what is this? This is so fun. This is so cute. I love this, it's like a little movie. And it made me happy to like have put that out there, like something just fun and joyous and and silly um, and I would say that was the day that like a little spark in my brain ignited and knew that I like there was something magical about that something I really liked about it so did I quit my day job and and pursue filmmaking no no I just continued to make little videos like that on my phone for my friends I would do holiday ones and these ones I actually do have the footage for archived there's one I filmed the main character me is given a secret Santa gift and she has to find out who it's from and it leads her to you know the Christmas tree that was in Union Square there was another one I did where I played an elf who's having a self-care day <laughs> the elf takes their self to visit a Christmas tree farm uh, go to the movies and have a little spa day with some cookies later when I moved to New York I had gotten Mochi my cat there were a couple little cute videos starring her. I did this one called The Woman Who Was Not Easily Impressed. And it's pretty much the tale of a woman who kind of isn't impressed by anything she sees. The coffee's too bitter, the buildings are too tall, the art isn't. And then she comes home and the only thing that impresses her is her cat and she's just like, she's perfect. But again, they were just very short, just for fun, just for my friends. I tried to make these little mini movies something more. I thought about YouTube and did anything come of it? No, the pandemic happened and I went through a layoff and a breakup and a move. So these things, these little projects we have, sometimes they get pushed aside. I didn't really go for a YouTube then, but the second best time was now. Are you tired of talking about yourself to a camera on a stick? Yeah, I could use a boost. Don't reach for that coffee. Well, why not? Haven't you already had your coffee today? Maybe like two cups. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Have you tried water? Is that that thing people keep telling me to drink more of? That's right, water. Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, 100% delicious. You're right. I feel hydrated and ready to talk about myself some more. That's the spirit. Now, get back out there and you tell that camera what's what. Thanks, voice in my head. And thanks, water. <sighs> Where were we? Um, so there's the thing, the work itself. And then there's the work that goes behind the work. And I find both equally fascinating. I always love seeing photos of writers' desks where they pen the great novel that came out or, or like a painter's studio. I love seeing behind the scenes of movie stuff. They just started filming in New York again and I love, you know, passing by when something's filming on the street and just like, it's just so cool. I like I like that stuff. I like getting a peek behind the scenes. The peek behind the scenes of a YouTube video. <laughs> so much of the magic happens in here. 
in the editing program, which I love. I film so that I can edit and I'm getting better at filming. I took a acting for camera class to get more experience. What? Stop the car. It was at the end of a long day and I get very like shiny. And I remember the teacher being like, uh, Kat, can we uh, get a couple blotting sheets and some powder on you? Cause you're doing a good job. This is very distracting. What is so important that you can't hold up your end of the bargain grant? We have children together. Do you get that? So. I really enjoyed the class a lot, but I thought maybe at home I could get a little bit more of the look I want. So I did invest in a nicer camera. Here, here's the thing about gear. Um, it can get very overwhelming, especially if you go on YouTube and you're looking up different types of vlogging cameras, different types of cameras for cinematic vlogs, and then all of a sudden you have like a, a $3,000 camera in your shopping cart and a lens that's $1,500. And I had to be like, whoa, what's happening? We're just getting started. You can get started with your phone and actually make it look really great. A lot of people do that. Just me being picky and a perfectionist and knowing I wanted to do this and commit myself to it, I threw some money at it and I got a camera that I saw some other people doing similar content as me use. And I have in my notebook right here, the settings that I need to use most of the time because I forget, you know? Why is everything delayed? And I'm sure I could go in and get to know my camera more, learn more of the features, make it look even better, but I, I just wanted to get started. And this is just a tip that I have if you are also just not technically minded or get overwhelmed easily. Learn as much as you need to get started and don't overwhelm yourself. You don't need to know everything about your camera or about cameras in general. You don't need the most expensive one. Just start somewhere, learn as much as you need to know to get started and just go. That's what I did with editing, how to color grade. Just do some light tweaking so the light's not as harsh so the colors match the vibe. Here's where I almost gave up. <laughs> Audio. 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 Audio is actually more important than video. You can kind of have a grainy, you know, imperfect looking image and people will be very forgiving, but if your audio sounds bad, it's just not a good experience. I knew how important it was and I messed around with my, my settings. I, I tried a couple things to like bring up the volume of my voice and in doing so, every cut that I made you could hear it. Every cut was just like, it just sounded awful and I listened to it back thinking I was close to being done with my video. I got so discouraged and so frustrated and I would just like slam the laptop down and just, you know, I give up. And um, I went to my boyfriend, Jeff. And by the way, he has his own YouTube channel where he makes cocktails. And I made it a point of pride to like not pester him with any questions about YouTube editing etc. But when I caved, when it came down to this audio stuff, I told him, you know, the sound thing, I, I don't know what to do. And he was like, oh, um, well, did you like smooth your audio clips over? I'm like, no, Who, what? He's like, yeah, you can detach your audio and extend each clip a little bit over each other so that there's not that harsh cut and it just, they all smooth from one to the other. I watched so many tutorials, nobody, talk, nobody talked about that. I felt like Carrie Bradshaw when, you know, she finds out she's supposed to like back up her work and she's like, apparently everybody's secretly running home at night and backing up their work. There's probably even better ways to do this, but it was a solve. I almost gave up this because of that. And it turns out you can always figure out how to move to the next step. And that's that's just a good lesson to learn in work and life and creativity. What's so fun about this type of creative work or when you find something that just clicks with you is you lose hours. You're just happily content working away at something. It was coming at a time where I was very anxious and in my head all the time and feeling listless and like I didn't have like purpose or anything. Like I had creative drive, but I had nowhere to channel it like and I didn't know where so to just kind of like have finally found something where I could put all that was such a gift Roll. and such a relief and such a joy in itself <laughs> <laughs> thanks voice in my head and thanks water <laughs> I think you got it you do yeah okay
And I will say, by the time I was ready to release that video, I went over it so many times, so many times, to the point where the perfectionist in me was like, it's fine, you may release it. Um, and she never likes anything I do. It was only after publishing that I noticed something glaring, and I'm gonna share it with you. Just because I think it's fun to share, like, things that are a little imperfect so we can all like relax and feel better. Just a warning, you won't be able to watch that video anymore the same again. So um, you're, you've been warned, here we go. Focus, check. I think some of the fears that I had about doing this in the first place are pretty common actually. You know, fear of um, wasting my time. You know, is this even the right, it's, you know, the case. You know, I grew up, what it looked like, you know? Like, you know, you know, you know, or, you know, some, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's me, you know, I, oh, Jesus Christ. You know, you know, I, you know, I, you know, you know, just, you know. No, they don't know. They don't know, Kat. They just met you. So how could they know? How could they know? No, they don't know. Stop saying, you know, they don't know. Oh my God, like one second. But it was too late, it was already out there. And it would have taken so much work to edit those two words out every time I said it. I had to let it go. And now I know not to say, you know, so many times. <laughs> and I catch myself. And I'm sure there are other things that will bother me too. I'm getting better, I'm learning, I'm having fun. And that's what it's all about. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping by. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <clears throat>